This video is sponsored by Paradox. Millennia, a new 4X game published by Paradox Interactive and developed by C Prompt Games that is all about exploring, expanding, exploiting, and exterminating. I mean, spreading freedom. And what better way to spread freedom in a brand new game by playing none other than the United States of America. I am being sponsored by Paradox Interactive today to show how you can spread freedom in millennia by absolutely breaking this game. Now if you know me from my YouTube channel, you know that I absolutely love breaking games and attempt to win as fast as possible. And through the selection of a national spirit, which we'll get into later, I'm going to be able to win this game in under 50 turns. Normally, you would progress through the ages, choosing different ages to best fit your empire as the game goes on, but not today. Today I'm out for blood! I mean, <clears throat> If you also wanted to play Millennia, you actually can. From February 5th through the 12th, you can click on starting off like most 4X turn-based strategy games. You recognize quite a bit of these features, but if you need a refresher, let's look at them. There's the tech tree, aka research in this game, where you accumulate knowledge, which is, you know, mostly known as science to unlock technologies, or advance into the next age, which is the Age of Bronze. Now, I'm choosing scouting first because, well, once unlocked, I could move onto deep forest and rainforest tiles, and two, I get a free scout upon finishing. So, we're just going to take scouting here. There's also culture in this game, a currency that accumulates to be spent on cultural powers, such as being able to create a town or local reforms, which boosts your city. And speaking of city, let's open up Washington. You can see all the different income and yields inside this city. We've got wealth, also known as gold. Then we have knowledge, which is science, culture. Improvement points, which is your tile improvements, production, food, and influence, which is your border expansion. The worker screen, which, as I mean, it's where you place your workers on your tiles to, to work the tiles, just like most 4X games. Um, we're working a food here. And then there's also the build screen, which is the production queue. You have your units, your buildings, your projects. Uh, we're just going to build a scout, just like usual, so we can go and scout around. Now we're not really going to worry about this type of stuff in this uh, this video because we're gonna we're gonna break the game. And here's one of the things that is, it's intended but it's kind of broken. The little undo button here. <laughs> that means you can undo the last action that you just did. And uh, yes, I know it's supposed to be in the game and it's in other games as well. But the fact that you can uh, scout around and be like, hmm, I don't like what this area looks like. Let me go back. Oh, I don't like what this area looks like. Let me go back as you see what, that I'm doing right here. And you can utilize this to basically <laughs> scout your entire starting area for free and see if you can find some tribal camps or maybe some barbarian camps. And using a variation of these combinations of moving and undoing, we start scouting. My warrior scouts a very tall mountain for me. In order to know the name, I'll need to move a scout there to find out. Just kidding, the AI did it for me. Ah yes, the known 12,000 foot mountain of America, Mount Fuji. On the next turn I gained enough culture to use a cultural power, and I'm far along enough to use my favorite one, Eureka, California. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm from this area, it's, it's, it's not, it's not my favorite, it's not my favorite. This culture power allows me to immediately gain 5 knowledge, so we're going to use this to boost through whatever I'm researching immediately, which is scouting, and that also gives me our free scout. And then we can also choose whatever tech we're taking next. I'm taking defenses here. It doesn't matter. I want to get through the Age of Bronze as fast as possible because it requires three technologies to finish to do so. And in order to break this game, we, we need to advance. I have officially met the nation of Sweden, whom were the first to discover that large mountain. A few more movements and I come across my first tribal camp. Like other 4X games, this is a goodie hut, a tribal camp where you move onto the tile and you gain rewards from it. I now have enough government XP to choose my first tribal government buff. We're taking plus one food to my homeland so that my cities may grow faster. With this scout completed, it's time to work on some infrastructure in my capital and I guess the town center seems fine. We don't honestly care what's in our city right now. You'll, you'll understand a little bit later. Another nation is met. Another future participant in my democratic escapades. Moving on to the tribal camp gives me my first quick time event. A lost warband is found and I can decide what to do with it. Now if I bring it with me, I gain that warband for free on the tile that the scout discovered it on. However, 
I can give the Warband directions and gain plus 10 Warfare XP. This is a currency that I'm going to need very much so in the future. Now I have 10 Warfare XP just sitting there to be used for all of my <clears throat> uh, diplomatic relations. Yes, very diplomatic. To the north, I come across what looks like Aurora Borealis at this time of day in this part of my nation. All localized entirely around my scouting cavalry. Defenses have been researched. I gained a free archer. And, uh, I mean, I guess we really, once again, don't care. I'm just going to take farming here. Now, this might be seen superfluous that I'm just kind of going about my my ways and just not even caring about tech and improvements. And that's, that's true for this specific strategy that I'm going to show you. We don't care. Another tribal camp to plunder. My scouts report back to me that they found a big blue hole. Now, I'm not sure what they mean by that, as they took it back instantly and decided to recklessly attack a nearby horseman. Weird. Sweden cannot withstand the power of freedom and democracy. The second travel camp gives me a conundrum. I think I'm going to study their ways so I can advance my research even further and complete the farming technology instantly. And the time has come. We must bronze. Once again, these scouts come back to me with the story of a big blue hole, but at least this time they have a name for it, which is the Grand Canyon? That's, uh... Huh. I have enough culture to learn how to pass on these tales through oral history, so I take it so I can gain plus one knowledge per turn. Another tribal camp. Ooh, I like government. As this one gives us mm, i'm gonna take the 50 wealth mostly because i'm hemorrhaging money and i need to stop the bleeding now and just like that the united states of america leaves the stone age and enters the world of malleable metals where we're we're really gonna break this game like it's 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 kind of understated how much we're gonna break this game there are a few things introduced in this age uh your vassals integrate two times faster but we don't have any so it doesn't matter Barbarian Warlords may start appearing, we also don't care. And Trade and Diplo Envoys become available, but once again, we don't care about that whatsoever. What we do care about are National Spirits and Innovation Chaos events appearing, which we'll get into those as they come along. A National Spirit in Millennia is like a nation's identity. It's the path that you choose to point your nation along for the rest of the game through each age. Now you can choose to be Explorers, which uses the Exploration XP to unlock perks, Warfare, which uses Warfare XP, Engineers, which uses Engineering XP, or Diplomats, which uses Diplomatic XP. Now, in this age, I am taking arguably the most broken National Spirit in the entire game, Raiders. Uh, they are exactly as they sound. A national spirit that wants you to go to war and wants you to pillage. Now, here's the thing with raiders. Whenever you unlock a perk with a national spirit, you create two raider units in your homeland. Now, this perk, Marauders, gives you plus one warfare XP from combat per unit. And what do we use warfare XP for? That's right. Unlocking more raiders, which in turn unlocks more raider band units. And I hope you can see where I'm getting at with this raider build now because it is so broken. There they are, the chosen ones, them. Come here, Sweden, I have, uh, I have something I wanna tell you. It's a secret. This is what I meant by researching farming, of course, yeah. Six warfare XP, thank you, thank you, thank you, yes. While I was spreading democracy, Sweden had some other plans. <gasps> With that little discussion, that I had with Sweden. Hey, I can unlock another perk. Now I can take Raider Band here, which gives me the ability to just spawn Raiders, but I'm actually gonna take Outlaws, which has zero wealth upkeep. That's right. Raiders have no maintenance cost. Absolutely broken. Now I'm gonna bring these Agents of Democracy. I mean, uh, hmm, yes. You know, let's just, I was going to go track, attack that free city up here, but I think it's just better to farm Warfare XP. Another tribal camp. This time I hit the jackpot. Now, I could choose between 20 Warfare XP or 30 Warfare XP and add some chaos to the total. Now, we just want the 30 Warfare XP and don't care about chaos. Chaos is its what happens when you choose specific options, such as that one, or you have unrest, or do things like fighting inside your territory. And if you accumulate too much chaos, you'll receive a growing negative modifier, which 
has a likelihood of receiving a chaos event at the start of each turn, such as barbs spawning in your territories. That may happen later. 51 Warfare XP means another perk. This time we are going to take Create Raiders, so that way we can just spawn raiders when we have enough Warfare XP. And hey, we got two. Now we're going to do it again. Now we got four. <laughs> this is This is absurd. Now enough time has passed and we're going to start working technologies in the Bronze Age. Now you may have noticed I unlocked something here that is uh, not normal and it's called the Age of Blood. Now instead of moving into the normal Iron Age, you can unlock Crisis Ages if you unlock specific modifiers. In this one, for example, you have to kill at least six non-barbarian units to unlock this and they have uh, both negative and positive side effects, but be warned if you unlock the crisis age such as the age of blood in this one you cannot choose to go into the age of iron you have to go into the age of blood so <sighs> yeah i'm choosing to go into the age of blood we're just gonna go ahead oh bye bye mr archer now, as you see here we've already killed three out of six we only have three more to kill we're going into this age We killed a few more barbs. That means we can get more raiders since we farmed more warfare XP. At this point, it doesn't matter what I do. I just want raiders. I just want warfare XP. I think it's about time we let the world know that America has arrived. We're here. You want our freedom. Banana dan. Banana dan. Sweden has freedom now. More Warfare XP means the Night March has arrived. Plus 10 movement on my hyper mobile democratic bolt throwers. I mean demagogues. I mean diplomatic envoys to spread the word of freedom across the world. Die. The Blood Age is upon us. So if we advance to the next era, if we're the ones to do it, the world is locked into a Blood Age. Move in. Democracy manifest. Bonk. You don't need walls. Early three raider band attacks later. And Sweden is gone. Just like that. Democracy prevails. Bye bye. Another perk means two more free raiders and 100% raise multipliers. This is insane. Oh lordy, I'm gonna innovate. Just like the chaos meter, there is an innovation meter, and when it fills up, you can choose to either innovate your national spirit or choose a lump sum of gold, and in this instance, raiders are gaining plus three attack and defense from innovating, so we're absolutely taking that plus 18 attack and defense now bonjour mon ami ça va il est temps de mourir i have been a little too raid happy and chaos has unfolded and unfortunately i don't have enough gold to pay so i guess this time barbarians are going to spawn outside of my cities but it doesn't matter paris is mine two attacks we gain some wealth and some 20 chaos. Here on out, it's a full-on assault on to Lyon. And because we've been just at war this entire time, we have more warfare XP, which means more raiders. But we're gonna defend ourselves with these barbs. Raiders. Goodbye, walls. Look at the look at the movement of these. Like, look at this. <laughs> That's insane. So much freedom. Uh this is this is canon, by the way. 100% canon. Uh, this is true American history right here. <laughs> Goodbye. Au revoir. Best part of the Raiders is that you can just kind of throw them at everything. Take down the walls. Take down the units. And then take the city. Au revoir, les incompetents. No one likes you anyways. Literally one turn later, and all of my <laughs> raiders have moved across to attack Persia. Once again, this is a uh, consequence of constantly going to war is all of this chaos, and that's fine. I don't have money. 
But it's, oh god, it's using barbs. Okay, that's gonna be a lot of barbs around our borders. Turns of battles means war fair XP, which means more raiders. I guess we'll defend ourselves. Apparently barbarians don't like freedom. Weird. We're doing a lot of bonking this game. And now the capital is mine. Goodbye, Persia. Hello, Greece. I'm on my way. I don't know where I'm going. The final research is complete, which means the Age of Blood is nigh. Look at me. I'm just, I am on the way. <laughs> Goodbye. That city's gone. Literally in one shot from my raiders. This is so ridiculous. Oh, I just love that the walls shatter when you attack them. It's so it's such a funny animation. Now I could win just right now on turn 42, uh, but I'm going to let it advance to the Blood Age. That way you guys can see what actually happens. Now this isn't going to matter to us since we're literally winning on the next turn, but in the Age of Blood a few things happen. All nations are locked into war, that means you cannot make peace. Unrest from war is disabled and chaos is reduced. Military units have reduced upkeep. You earn extra warfare XP by killing non-barb units and new governments unlocked. Yeah. Age of blood time. <laughs> Give me your capital. It's going to take like maybe two hits here. There's one. Let's skip ahead. Do we destroy the walls? We do. And two. There. There it is. Victory. Freedom. Yeah, take that, you stupid wooden post. Dumb outpost. Stupid lookout tower. Goodbye, Greece. Easy peasy. Raiders are absolutely broken. They are 100% broken. Holy moly. Now, I'm sure they will be changed. As a reminder, this is a very, very early access build on Millennia. But man, that is... That is insane. This was on normal difficulty, but it honestly would not have been that much different on the hardest difficulty of Grandmaster as I've done it a few times already and I just kind of wanted to showcase how broken they can be in this game. <laughs> honestly, this is actually a ton of fun. It has that next turn itch that 4X games are known to have. There are some things that... Uh, you know, are a little different, and I'm still not sure how I feel about, you know, like the combat system, for example, um, but going around and pillaging and exploring and expanding definitely gives that one turn, that next turn itch. Now, uh, the mixing and matching of the different spirits and governments is also another really cool aspect of this game that I've really been enjoying, and I'm really excited to see uh, what else is to be shown in the future. Now, there's a lot of parts of this game that I did not show, so if you wanted to you can find me streaming this at twitch.tv slash Bostheus, and I will be streaming this until uh, until I can't. And if you wanted to play this for free, you can. You can play the demo up to the third age by clicking on the link in my description below from February 5th through the 12th. During the Steam Next Fest, you can play Millennia for free. Now, once again... Thank you to Paradox for sponsoring this video. It was a lot of fun to make this. I hope you guys enjoyed this. You can you can come join the community at discord.gg slash boasts if you wanted to hang out. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter. And if you wanted to support me on Patreon and Coffee as well, as well you can. The description is in, the links are in the description. I can't words good. But I think that's going to do it for me here. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.